Okay, I start the event, sir. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Morning. Yeah, th welcome and thank you for attend this event. So we now we have a visiting lecture with Bugema University from Uganda. Yeah, we today uh, we have a lecture doctor from Bugema University, Doctor David Mpanga, and we will we will discuss about. Cloud ERP SAS, a key enabler from SMAS. Yeah. And then after after the presentation, we have a QA session. After that, we will we will have a, a closing and then we will we will take a documentation for this event today. Okay, so we will start the presentation. I will I will uh yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, Doctor D David. Yes, please. Yeah. Are you ready for today presentation? Yes, please. I'm ready. Okay. You You look so happy today. Yeah. I hope. I hope. Yeah. I hope this will it will be a happy lecture today. Okay. So, uh, the time is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. So I greet you all in the name of Almighty God, and I thank God for this opportunity that we can now interact, even if we are far from each other. So it's a great pleasure to have this interaction. Uh, this morning, ah, it is morning on this side, and I understand this afternoon on your side. So I would like to share with you the Cloud ERP SaaS. SaaS is basically a software as a service. And I want to make an argument that it is a key enabler. It is something that really will help our small and medium enterprises to grow or to remain competitive in this volatile economic environment. So I'm David Panga from Bugema University, School of Computing and Informatics. Oh, seems the, is the, the, the slides are moving on the other side. Hello. Sorry, sir. It seems I'm losing you. Hmm? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you move the slide from that side? Because slides are not moving here. Uh, you can slide share this. Let me first fix something here. Uh, oh, sorry, it seems uh, my machine is uh, freezing. I cannot move my slides. Ah, uh, just a minute, please. Okay, okay, it's okay. It's okay, sir.
Ya mohon maaf teman-teman uh, narasumber kita kelempar. Jadi kita tunggu sebentar uh, dan sedang ada masalah juga sama flight presentasi beliau jadi ya kita tunggu sebentar. Oke, okay. hello Mr. David. Can you hear my voice? Ya. Yeah. Hello. Ha, ah, oke. Okay. Is there uh, still a problem here or it's clear now? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Is it okay, sir? Can you hear my voice? I don't hear you. You don't hear me. I hear. I can hear you. Your voice is clear on me. Are you have a network problem, sir? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear my voice, sir? Hello. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> you hear me, please? Yes, I hear you.
Yeah, we can hear you, sir. You hear me? Yes. It's clear. But can you hear my voice, sir? Can you hear my voice, sir? Okay, if you can hear me, then I think... Uh, okay, let me try to get the headphones and see whether you can get me properly, please. Just a minute, let me see. <clears throat> <clears throat> hello yeah hello okay now i hear you ah okay is that okay to everyone yeah it's okay sir all right sorry sorry about that yes yeah. so let's see whether you can move forward now Yes. Uh, let, let, let me try to share my my yes. screen. Yeah. Uh, do you see my screen? Not yet, sir. Okay. You see it now? No, yes, we see we see it. Now you can okay. start, start the presentation. Good. Okay. Okay, I've introduced myself that I'm from the School of Computing and uh, Informatics. And uh, I've done a research in the Cloud ERP as a software for public sector and um, small and medium enterprises. And my publications are there online, you can search and get them. And I uh, also do practice as a SaaS provider, I work with a, a company in Germany where I promote the use of SaaS in the SMEs. Also, I teach at the Bugema University and I'm the dean. So basically my line is within the SaaS and the public sector and also the small and medium enterprises. In today's presentation, I'll go through the fundamental concepts, which I think all of us need to understand so that we read from the same page. I'll look at the, the challenges with SMEs, the common challenges presented. And then I will try to get a new concept of what is a competitive advantage within the prevailing economic challenges. So we look at the, the crowd DRP as software in relation to SMEs. Then we consider the challenges. Uh, maybe if possible, we look at the demo of how I can do the analytics. If not possible, maybe I'll give the link on that time. And uh, I'll conclude by giving my recommendation from my experiences. So the purpose of this presentation is basically to create awareness among the academicians, oh, sorry, 
to create awareness among the academicians, uh, government and the other practitioners, the critical need for YSME is to adopt ERP systems, but as SAS, they may not be able to adopt ERP uh, in other delivery solutions, but as a software, as a service. So uh, the academicians and the practitioners in IT plus government need to be convinced that our SMEs need help to adopt this technology if they are going to grow. So the fundamental concepts I want us to look at this morning as crowd, crowd computing, DRP, crowd DRP, SAS, crowd DRP, SAS, SME, and competitive advantage. Why I want us to look at this concept is, in some cases, some authors and even practitioners use these concepts interchangeably, or sometimes they confuse the audience. So I want us to agree on uh, a given understanding of these concepts. So when you talk about crowd, some people think it's a myth, something which does not exist. They don't see how data or business can be run in a crowd because ideally people, when they talk about crowd, they think that thing is in heaven, that space. But I want to, I want us to agree with, there are so many definitions, but I got this definition from the link there, which is very interesting, I think. It is a computing environment. It is basically a set of, or a village or a huge set of very powerful computing machines that are kept in a given place that has high storage capacity, high processing capacity, that can store big volumes of data and can be maintained and shared through the web. So when you talk about crowd in computing, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about an environment set up somewhere with a very powerful machines, high processing capacity, high security that can be accessed through the web. So fundamentally, that is the, the graphical presentation. On the side here, you see a set of machines. And I got this from uh, Memsai Tools, uh, the company I work with to develop SMEs. I mean, in SaaS for SMEs. So when we talk about cloud computing, we are talking about the environment or a model that can help uh, individuals or organizations to access conveniently resources from a single place remotely. These resources can be configured so that you can use them, you can use the network, you can use the servers, you can store the applications, you can do everything. So cloud computing is basically a, a, a set of shared resources that are configured, if you configured and can be accessed on demand. So those two definitions, they bring out the key understanding of this environment, that the service is through the internet, data can be stored there, you can have access to the real databases, the networks and software. There are a number of deliveries of, uh, of crowd computing, but I'm not going to deliver into that because this presentation is not necessarily a technical presentation for ERP, but is basically a business presentation relating the technology to the business because we want to see how our SMEs can benefit from this technology. Now, what is ERP? Uh, again, there are some confusions here. Some people think ERP is just because it is a, a big software. No, ERP is fundamentally a solution or a software that, that can bring processes together. Where you can manage your day-to-day -day business activities, it can be in accounting, it can be procurement, it can be supply management, it can be other things in manufacturing. And you combine those processes together so that data can be streamlined. Data can be collected from different sources and it is streamlined to make the data visible throughout the organization. So it's not just that it's a big software, no. Fundamentally, it has to 
make sure that it captures all the processes related to that function and bring the data into the same uh, visibility. So down here, that's why I'm saying, it is critical for managing thousands of businesses of all sizes and in all industries. So when we talk about ERP as a, a software that brings together all those processes, SMEs tend to think that is not relevant to them. And some people tend to think that ERP is a huge solution for SMEs. So this afternoon, I want us to look at this from the perspective of software as a service that it is affordable and it's very convenient and really critical, important, critical for SMEs to survive in this economic environment. So what about cloud ERP? ERP solution can be deployed within the business premises. You can buy your servers and install that solution. You can buy the solution, you get licenses, then you install it in your solution, in your premises. But now that's a very big challenge because you need to have initial investment to have the hardware and software required to run the ERP. So now cloud ERP means you move your ERP system instead of deploying it in your premises on the servers in your premises. Someone has developed it and kept on the crowd. You have already seen what crowd is. That is a, uh, a setup of very powerful computing machines that can have very high processing capacity, well managed, highly secured. So someone or a company that's developing the solution host it on the crowd. Or you can have your solution and then have go and hire a, a, a space and host it. So crowd ERP means this ERP is not stored within the premise, but is stored on the third party facility. That's a crowd. So the vendor platform is a third party uh, platform where the ERP is stored. What about SaaS? SaaS is basically software as a service. So in this case, the software is not sold. You don't go and buy a software, but you get a, you use it. You use a software as a tenant. For example, if you are hiring a house or a room where to live, you hire a room from a flat which has maybe 20, 30, 40, or 50 rooms. You hire only one room and use that one as your home. In that case, you are a tenant. You're not taking the whole house. So that is something here. You use a software just to serve your purpose. You don't have to own it. So this software can be used in finance, can be used in supply chain, can be used in human resource, customer experiences, sales, name it. And can be used in any field. Let it be agriculture, let it be mining, let it be manufacturing, in all environments can be used. So Cloud ERP, vis-a-vis -vis Cloud ERP SaaS, not every Cloud ERP is used as a service. As I mentioned in the previous presentation, you can have your ERP, you own it, but you put it on a third party platform. But when you talk about Cloud ERP SaaS, we mean the ERP system now developed, it is on the third party environment and in this case is the developer or the provider and you're using it as a service you just use what you need to use you don't own the solution so the cloud erp the application owned by a single organization but when you come to cloud erp SaaS, the application is shared by a number of organizations or individuals in the same industry yeah we are saying if you're manufacturing the erp can be supporting the manufacturing industry or it is in agriculture or agribusiness, it can be supporting agribusiness. If it is in a hospital, it can be used by uh, the, the hospitals. So here the key thing is the ERPs are developed on the basis of best practice. The developers look at the best practice in the given environment and they develop uh, uh, an ERP or a software that can capture all the processes which are in that which are common in that uh, business or that industry. 
Uh, I put this one in red because there's an argument. What do you mean by best practice? But uh, I will not go into this here because I'm not the one to be highly technical. But uh, fundamentally, ERP are developed on the basis of business practice in the given industry. So in this case, we're talking about proud ERP software as a service. Now, SMEs. SMEs are basically defined or described differently based on the country. The small and the medium sized enterprise in Indonesia, it is characterized differently from an SME in Uganda. But fundamentally, the, the bottom line is they, they measure based on assets they have, they measure based on the revenues they, they generate, and the number of employees they take in. So they determine the threshold that if you are below this or you have this, you are SME. So there's no specific parameter we can use to say internationally or globally, this is an SME. But fundamentally, it is a small and medium organization with a threshold determined by uh, a given country. <clears throat> so why do we bother ourselves with the SMEs? People would think that uh, our interest will be with the big companies because they generate a lot more money, they employ so many people and things like that. But the truth is, I have a few examples here, one from Indonesia, another one from Uganda. Why do we have to think about SMEs seriously? You see now from that link, we see that over 62 million SMEs in the country. That means uh, by, this, by the time this uh, information was generated, 62 million SMEs in the country, that's a huge community. We cannot ignore that. And they say that means for every five Indonesians, there's an SME. So uh, with the, which account for 56% of the investment and 95% of the domestic employment. So you can see the contribution to, to investment and employment. Therefore, we cannot ignore the impact or the contribution of SMEs to our economies. That's why we have to think about SMEs seriously and find the provisions to make them survive and even to grow. When you look at Ugandan case, 70% of our economy and they contribute above 20% of the GDP. So you cannot ignore that kind of sector. You can't just you can't do that. So that's why it is really important for us, even if we are coming from the IT or computing side, to think through how we are going to bring the technology into the business to make the SMEs survive and grow. If we do that successfully, that means our economies are going to grow. More, more jobs will be created and we will have uh, our economies uh, growing. So that's why it's really important for us, even if you are coming from computing or IT, to think about SMEs seriously. So what are the challenges, basically? Uh, these are the common challenges most uh, researchers or government, they come up with the uh, SMEs. So they have challenges with the funding, that's right. They have management skills issues, that's right. They have a number of issues here now that are related, the other one which I put in red, are related to things I want to highlight this afternoon in relation to the crowd ERP SARS. Lack of funding, fine. Lack of money means still fine. But when people talk about lack of strategic plan, the question here comes, why, why, why can they really have strategic plans? Maybe some people say most of SMEs are owned by people who are illiterate, but that may not be true, 100%. In this perspective of our today's this discussion, I want to say that First, to have a strategic plan, you must have the data. You must have the historical data, data which you, for a business maybe last year, you must have the data for this current year. Then you can start working on projections. There is no way you can work out a plan strategically. If you don't know how the business is running, therefore it is possible 
as much as they might have other issues, SMEs might not be able to do strategic plans because they don't have data management systems that are fitting them. They, some of them try to put down maybe that on the on the paper, but that's not good enough. So the issue here I want to present to you, colleagues, this afternoon, that SMEs have issues with data management. Therefore, they cannot have such a plan. Number two, if we talk about law on our adoption of IT, that's fine. Why? But why? You're not doing that. The issue is likely to be cost because fundamentally high-end technology is very expensive. For example, ERPs are very expensive. They are in millions of dollars. SMEs do not afford that. And number two, they don't have the skills, high-end IT skills. How do they go about that? So I want to make an argument this afternoon that crowd ERPs has deal with this clearly, as I'll explain in the coming slides. So another thing, the issue is of emerging economic blocks competition. Across the world, countries or governments are trying their best to see that they merge, they create economic blocks. I think you, there, there you have uh, the ZDSC, Asian ESC. In the, here we have East African community, we have Comesa. We, we have a number of blocks coming up. They are trying to bring national countries together to create markets, to have a way they can do business better. That's fine, but it is causing trouble with SMEs because when you open the borders, that means competition increases. But for me, I want to make an argument this afternoon that the issue here is about IT strategic planning. If our SME, SMEs can really adopt crowd ERP SaaS, they can easily deal with the, the competition that's coming from economic blocks. And that's why, as I go ahead, I'll explain why I need to rethink or reconceptualize what is competition or what is competitive advantage in this context. So, as I mentioned, or as our presentation title is today, that's probably our piece as a neighbor to SMEs. What are we talking about exactly here? How does probably our piece has become a critical key enabler for SMEs? Someone might think that the key thing for SMEs, it is funding. The truth is, I don't think this is the problem would be funding because big companies can get the funding. And I think countries have the money, government have the money. But the challenge is SMEs are struggling. Even if you find them, sometimes they fail. So why is now crowd ERP SAS becomes a critical enabler? So the only way SMEs can survive in a volatile environment with high competition is being able to make decisions quickly. They should be able to make some key decisions. They should be able to forecast. They should be able to project. They should be able to see how the economy is changing and also they change accordingly. Even if it's about opening up borders or creating economic blocks, they should be able to understand how the, the, the businesses are run in that kind of environment. So they have to have access to business analytics. Business analytics cannot be generate, generated easily from the reports they keep on papers, or basically using Word or, or Access or PowerPoint easily from their day-to-day -day activities. Therefore, they need to have access to predefined business analytics. And the Proudy does this very well. You enter your data in the system and you'll be able to see the analytics on a daily basis, but it's updated automatically. So there's no way an organization SME can, can survive or grow when they cannot make any decisions depending on the changes in the economic environment. Another reason why crowd ERP has become a key enabler, we have to have the visibility across the business partnership within the economic block or within the country. 
For example, an SME might be supplying inputs. For a given, for example, if they are dealing in agriculture and they are supplying inputs to the farmers, or the SME can be dealing in garments and they have to buy inputs from different suppliers. So if there was a, a solution where a supplier and a consumer of the product can see each other in terms of business, business data, that means someone will be able to see how much will a supplier need or who will need how much at a given time. The SMEs need to see their customers, how they change, how customers basically change in, in, in buying on a behavior. So that is very important and can be achieved when we have a clear data visibility across business partnerships. So it is possible for SME in one location to work with an SME in another location. One is a supplier of the input, one is a consumer. And if they can see the data across their businesses, it is really easy for them to make strategic plans. Another, number, another one is number three. Crowd ERP becomes a key enabler because you pay as you use. You don't have to invest a lot of money in the IT or in the technology. If SMEs are going to invest their money in technology, they will lose their capital. In this case, they will need to pay a lot of money. It is paid as basically you have used, you have uh, using. As I see a hand from uh, a colleague here, please. Is it okay I take uh, that? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. David. Yes, okay. please. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kasyadi from SMA One Ngorong, Mojokerto, East Java, Indonesia. Uh, after uh, looking at uh, pay attention of your uh, presentation, I want to ask to you there are two questions. First, how to use IT in the our work successfully. The second must be change of human workers with IT in our business or world. Thank you very much of your answerings, Mr. David. Thank you, but I didn't, I didn't get the, the second the question clearly, but the, the first one was how can we use IT successfully in our businesses? Is that right? Okay, uh, let, let me go ahead. I will answer those questions, I think, in the second slide. How can we successfully deploy IT in SMEs? One way is uh, this number three here. When we get crowd ERP SaaS, when we get a provider, and I will show you, uh, I will share with you that provider I'm working with, the solution is developed. It is managed, maintained by the provider. So the user or the SME just has to get a relationship with the provider and uses the things already designed for them. And they only pay that small amount of money depending on how much resources they use. So that way, in actual fact, the SME does not have to do any job to implement IT in SME environment company. No, because everything is done by the provider, the SME just use. For example, you have a telephone and you are using WhatsApp, or now we are, use, we are interacting through Zoom. We, we, we don't own Zoom. I am here, I just linked on, you linked on, and we are carrying out business. We are exchanging ideas. We are interacting. And we are charged just for using Zoom for the hours we are going to use it. 
In this case, we don't need to know how Zoom is developed. We do not know how Zoom is managed. We just need to know how to use it for our own purpose. So that's a successful way of implementing this crowd DRP SaaS in SME. If you want accounting, if you want a supply chain management, if you want customer relation management, you don't need to develop or deploy it in SME environment, but to learn how to use it. So let me continue with the number four. So the high-end IT skills that I've been talking about, why Cloud ERP SaaS is a key enabler and very easy to deploy. It takes, by the way, it takes just a few minutes and you're already connected because you don't need to have the skills, the high-end skills. You just have to get the user skills. But the management, the security, the upgrading, all those technical things are done by the provider. So you just have to learn, do this to end up here, do this to see that or not. Another one, the reason why Cloud ERP size is a key enabler is it scales instantly. You, it, as you grow, it grows. So there's no way you can say, oh, now I've come to limit, I have now to upgrade my hard disk, I have to upgrade my software. All those things are done by the provider. So the transaction you do on demand, if you want to increase, you increase. If you want to decrease, you decrease. So the success of deploying IT solution in SME businesses, it is as software as a service. We have to capture the processes and get a relevant solution and they use it as a service. So competitive advantage. Why do you think, why Cloud ERP software as a service really will enable SMEs to become really competitive, to survive and even to grow in this environment? Traditionally, competitive advantage looks at in this perspective of adding value to product or service or reduce its, its own cost. So it's about increasing value and reducing cost traditionally. But I, this is my now submission that we have now to look at competitive advantage from a different perspective in relation to technology or how the RP SaaS and the economic environment, how it's changing. It's not only adding value in product or service, or just lowering prices. Everyone can do that. It is possible that you can go in a town and you find a price of a given commodity is the same. And the fundamental it is possible to find the price is the same and the quality is the same. Then how would you create competitive advantage in that environment? That's why I want to make a submission today that we get a, a new look at what this thing called the competitive advantage. My line in the red, I would say that the competitive advantage is agility to respond to customer needs promptly. Agility means how fast, how flexible is the SME respond to customer needs? How fast do you do that? You are a small organization dealing in a given business, but how fast do you respond to customer needs as they change? When, when the economic uh, economies are tough, when customer need A, B, C, D, E, how quickly do you see that and respond? That can only be achieved when the SMEs have a solution that can provide them with the quality analytics, where they can manage their day-to-day -day data, how things are changing on a daily basis. Then out of that, they can really design tactics or strategies to respond to customer needs promptly. So even if you have the same quality, and you have the same price. Despite the fact that you have the same quote and same price, if I can respond to customer needs more promptly than you, I will beat the market. For example, if I'm SME and I'm selling, for example, food stocks, and now I find that customers don't have time to come and buy groceries. They are very busy, tough times, they work up late hours. And I quickly notice that out of the data I collect on daily basis. And I say, okay, what I'm going to do now is to do delivery. 
I will start doing delivery immediately. Let's respond to customers' needs that they want things to be delivered to their offices or to their homes. If you don't have the data to show you quickly how customers are changing in behavior or in buying practices, it will be very difficult. If you don't have data or analytics that show you how sales are changing on daily basis, you do not know that if I deliver my product to town A, the sales are going down. But to town B, sales are increasing on daily basis. So I should shift my deliveries from town A to town B. How quickly, how efficiently do SMEs respond to changing customer needs, depending on the changes in the in the economy. So that's why I want us to, to look at uh, competitive advantage from that perspective. Therefore, we'll be able to, to deploy solutions for SMEs to enable them to grow and also survive. So to achieve this, we need to have quality analytics for strategic actions. We must take actions radically based on the, the facts we get from our data. Number two, we need to have partnerships among the distributed enterprises. Even if now we have challenges with the economic blocks, even if we have challenges in, in many aspects, but SMEs need a, they do pattern because SMEs also get inputs. That means they have suppliers. SMEs also sell their product. That means they have uh, they do sales. They have customers. So there is a need to have that partnership, supplier consumer. I will talk about B two B somewhere. So SMEs, it's the time they think about these concepts which are being developed for big organizations, they can also adapt to them within the context of cloud ERP, SaaS. Another thing we need to think about is to improve enterprise performance. SMEs also have to improve their performance because as I've seen, they have a very big contribution on their economies. So they should have access to your time data for timely decision making if they are going to improve on their performance. You shouldn't wait for a month or a year to see that things are going wrong in my company, in my enterprise. It should be seen within a day or two that things are going wrong. And that can be achieved if they have access to real time data or from the day to day experiences. And uh, here I wanted to show you uh, the company I work with the, uh, to provide the cloud ERP SaaS, but uh, I wanted the technician to link me to the data sets, but I won't get a communication from him this morning. I don't know what happened to him. So I'll come back to that in case I get his uh, contact now that he's ready with the, that access. Now, what are we trying to say here? As I wind up that uh, argument, what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is SMEs need to have access to quality data of their day-to-day -day operations. And that data has to be analyzed so that they can get the visual presentation of that data so that they can make decisions quickly. So, Access to real time data and analytics to enhance competitive advantage. They need the support from government, from development agencies, and the higher institutions of learning to support SMEs to adopt this solution. Because some SMEs they are not aware that these things happen. For example, how often do SMEs get conferences through Zoom? How often do you organize them to get workshops and training through Zoom? We might think that Zoom is a very, uh, it is a solution for higher people, higher institutions of learning, people who have ABCD, people who have a lot of money. It's not true. We can introduce SMEs to interact with their, with their, with their customers, interact with their sales people, interact with, with their, within the among themselves through Zoom. It's possible. But the challenge is, Hiration of learning and sometimes government agencies and government is not taking a deliberate effort to bring the technology close to SMEs 
to show them that these things are possible. We can use even local language to educate them. A clear example I normally use is people use smartphones, even the people in the village smartphones, but they're not highly educated. A smartphone is really a high tech solution, but how do they learn to use it? Because it's close to them. So if government, government agencies, high school of learning, support SMEs, bring the technology close to them, they will get to learn that this is a useful thing to them. And they have access to your time data and analytics, and then improve their competitive advantage. Promoting business to business, this B2B is a concept developed for big organizations. They have their supplier and the consumer or manufacturing. They have to have that relationship. And that relationship creates visibility of data across those two. So this can be done among SMEs. It is really possible. When you have pro ERP, it is possible to have that visibility. It is possible. So we need just leverage capacities. This one, we are going to lower IT capital investment for SMEs. We are going to reduce the cost of doing business. Therefore, in that way, SMEs will be able to grow and SMEs will be able to survive the challenges in the economic environment. So, but this is not possible if government, government agencies, institutions have not gone down to bring the technology pros in simple terms to SMEs. So that's why I give a recommendation here that we need to promote B2B, but government, government agencies, and social learning should develop the agenda on how to do that. So that SMEs get to know that really things are possible and affordable. Another thing is, what I, another recommendation, if you want to provide the quota to economic planning authority, those who are planning, our planners in the economy, those who come up with the budgets every year, Sometimes they use speculative data because they don't have actual data from SMEs. So if government, government agencies, high school learning really work together to make sure that this kind of technology, ERP supervisory service, is adopted in SMEs, it will not only help SMEs to survive and grow, it also help government, the planning authorities, have access to analytics that shows clearly how things are, are moving on. So I'm not saying here that they will have access to the data of the organizations or each individual SMEs because that has some issues. But the analytics, how things are moving on with the SMEs. So planning authorities will have access to that. So the support from government, government agencies, and showing high school learning is really critical for this. And I've put something in red there. Sometimes, and from my experience, from my research, most of ch the challenges, people, individuals, or even big organizations, or even SMEs, are policy related regulations from government or regulating authorities. So when we come to crowd ERP, software as a service, the challenge is what are the regulations in terms of data security in a given country? Every country has its own legislations related to data management or data security. So proud ERP software as a service, data is stored on a third party platform. The third party platform could be outside that country where they have different legislations. So how do you deal with that? That's why I said government has to come in in promotion or in campaign or in awareness of the adoption of these technologies because there are some policy issues that have been dealt with. There are some regulations. In some environments or some countries, government would like to access all the data of a given business or organization. In some countries, so no, it's not possible. It is private. Data is private, is only accessed by the owner. And that's, that's, that's what the law is. So in some cases, there's a contention there. 
So that's why we need that, that this discussion to think about our policy review or the regulatory uh, constants we have that prohibit or hinder storage of data outside or across borders. So that's why I give a recommendation that we have to have engagement with the government, government agencies, high school learning, to see how we can harmonize regulation to ensure that policies don't constrain the adoption of software as a service. I would like to say that uh, uh, with that, uh, thank God we are in, in time. I thank you very much for your attendance to listen to my presentation. And please, here yeah, now, I request for your contributions or questions. Yes, sir, from that side. Okay. Okay, thank you for Dr. David. Uh, so next we have a Q&A session. So for the participant that want to ask a question, you can write the question in the live chat, Zoom or YouTube, or you can raise hand, you can raise hand and then we will help you to, uh, to say your question. And uh, maybe you, if you want to ask a question in Indonesian, you can write it. So I, I will help you to translate it uh, in English. And then, so we have uh, first, first uh, questionnaire there from, this is from uh, Mr. Kasiadi. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Aska. Okay, uh, Mr. David. Uh, yes, okay, I want to uh, ask to you about how we will, the loss of the data, the data of the uh, economics, uh, the laws of the uh, the IT use of the human error. What the uh, what's the meaning of the how uh, we how do we uh, do if the data the laws of economics? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if I got you clearly, the question was about the data laws or basically data management, if I go, I got your question clearly. <laughs> so when we talk about cloud ERP software as a service, the providers or the organizations that develop these solutions have skills and knowledge in managing data securely. I want to give an example. The systems we use like emails, the Gmail, basically those are solutions which are software as a service. These organizations have the skills and the resources to securely manage high volumes of data. They have the capacity even better than an individual organization. Therefore, the issue of data security may not allow arise here. The issue of data loss, they have adequate backup resources. In actual fact, from my experience, I've never had an organization that's providing these solutions, a credible organization that has lost data. In terms of maybe penetration or hacking or things like that, that is about techniques or solutions available for security to protect the data. But I strongly believe that all organizations who are credible, data providing ERP software as a service, they have secure solutions to protect the data and even to do the backups. In actual fact, they do, you do your day-to-day -day data activities, it is stored in there, they have the backups. For anything, if you want, if you lost your data in any way, they can have the backups. So when you talk about software as a service, that means everything is in the hands of the provider. So here, the issue of policy, it is local policy. How would you accept or how would you give provisions of storing data on a third party platform outside the country? 
I don't know whether I've answered your question clearly. Yes, please. Hello. Hey, hello. Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, another question. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, I have uh, another question. It's sent in my direct message on Zoom. Yeah, the question is, uh, many owners of uh, MSAS in Indonesia is uh, the people that don't not not very understand at technology. So, how about how about this? Uh, is it need to use a uh, cloud ERP is is or or not? I didn't get uh, the last statement. Yeah. So it it is important for the for the uh, SME as that the owner is don't not very uh, understand with the technology, especially in in the cloud technology. So is it is it is is it still need to use uh cloud ERP SIS or just use the that that yeah. So okay, if I got your question correctly. Mm -hmm. So the SMEs, true, they don't understand this technology or crowd technology. That's why uh, in my recommendation, I suggested that issues of higher learning, they should strategically or should deliberately cause awareness or educate the SMEs about this technology and how it can help them. I strongly believe they will be able to understand this. That's why I gave an, an example. Right now, people use WhatsApp. Even in local communities use WhatsApp. People use emails. So these are technologies, basically, probably crowd-based. So, but because they are close to them, and it's made it simple for them to understand how they can be used. They have adopted them. The same way they can adopt these solutions from social, instead of using social media only, we have also solutions that are business oriented. They just need to be informed. We have students in the university from schools of computing, schools of IT. Those can be the change agents people who are, should be trained in these proud technologies. Number two, we should do inform or educate the SMEs. They shouldn't be worried about these technologies because they don't need to have high-end technologies. They just have to learn how to use it as they learn how to use a phone. That when you click here, you put this kind of data. When you click here, you put this kind of data. And these solutions can be even, by the way, adopted to local languages. It is possible. So it is it's my conviction that software as a service is the best way for SMEs to go. Why? You don't have to invest highly in technology. And by the way, you can use your smartphone and you access the crowd ERP software as a service. You don't need to buy a laptop. You can use your smartphone, or it can run on a laptop, or it can run on a tablet. So it is possible that people can use even what they have, the, the tools they have at the moment to start using ERP. They can move on to laptops, they can move on to tablets and things like that. And I strongly believe that now hardware prices are getting down. More so with the engagement of government and developing agencies, it is possible to develop a, a, a version of a laptop or a tablet that is suitable for SMEs. It is possible. Yes, please. Okay, thank you for the answer, sir. Okay, so uh, until now, we don't have any question. For the participant that uh, want to ask question, you can write it in the live chat 
or you can raise hand. Yeah, we 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 still have a uh, a time. I'll check on the YouTube. Yeah, I think it's no more questions, sir. Yeah. Oh, before I before I close the, uh, today lecture, maybe you can you you have a conclusion or yeah something to say before I close the lecture, sir. Thank you, man. I don't have a question. I just have an appreciation to our friends from Stockholm University. Thank you very much for organizing this interaction. And uh, I would wish that you could organize another interaction or presentation directly with the SMEs. There we can even set or engage them live with the SM with the solution and we do like kind of workshop interaction. We set them in a laboratory, maybe at the university or somewhere else, and we show them how to enter data into that. And they give us their comments, how they feel. We could be arrange even to have demos for analytics, practical workshop kind of thing. I wish one day you could arrange a practical arrangement, and then we go through the workshop with the SMEs, and we demonstrate basically how, how the RP SaaS can help them in their businesses. Thank you very much all the effort to plan and manage this interaction okay thank you thank you you're welcome uh, Dr. Dexit, and thank you so much for this lecture today okay <clears throat> so uh we have we after the presentation and the q and a session now i'll close the lecture today thank you for the uh, lecture from Bugema University and thank you for all participants today from the Stockholm University and uh, other yeah from the, from the Stockholm University lecturer and the students and then uh, before I end the meeting so you can open your camera or because I, I, I will take uh, some screenshot for the documentation yeah Ya, teman-teman bisa buka kameranya buat kita ambil dokumentasi bersama. Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. 1 2 3. Ya. Oke. Oke, eh thank you so much for Dr. David. I hope uh, we will meet in the another event, another lecture and we will collaboration in another uh <coughs> event okay thank you dr david and thank you for all the participants today yeah thank you so much